Atlantis, the Lost Empire. A legendary island and ancient civilization whose advancements in technology and science could rival the developed world today. And yet, in a single day of misfortune, the island of Atlantis disappeared into the depths of the sea. The complete destruction of its civilization was prevented, however, through a mysterious power held in the heart of the city. Lesson 1. Planning ahead can help prevent disaster. There are few that believe that Atlantis is more than a mythical legend. One of those believers is Milo Thatch, who works at a museum in Washington, D.C. Milo has new evidence as to the whereabouts of the Shepherd's Book. This legendary book supposedly has forgotten knowledge that can lead to the lost empire of Atlantis. Despite his current obscurity, Milo dreams of following his grandfather's footsteps and being an explorer and finding Atlantis. Lesson 2. Leaving a legacy for your grandchildren is one of the greatest gifts you can give. Despite getting brushed off by the museum board members, Milo tries to chase them down to convince them of his new findings about Atlantis. Milo's persistence finds no compassion with the board members, however. Lesson 3. Persistence is not giving up despite facing many obstacles. Milo's research into Atlantis hasn't gone unnoticed, however, and Milo meets Helga when he returns to his apartment. Her employer has a proposition for Milo and brings him back to his mansion. Apparently, her employer is a very wealthy man. When Milo meets Mr. Whitmore, he notices how eccentric and peculiar he is, but is pleasantly surprised when he gives Milo a gift from his grandfather, the Shepherd's Journal. Turns out Milo is right. The journal is not in Ireland, but in Iceland. He has already financed the whole works, with all the submarines, aircraft, motor vehicles, supplies, and personnel needed to make a legendary expedition to Atlantis. A crew has already been assembled. All they need now is a linguist for the journey to translate whatever writings they might find and to interpret the Shepherd's Journal to guide them. Milo just needs to say yes and the adventure can start. Lesson 4. It takes courage to start a new adventure. But for Milo, he's so excited about Atlantis, he eagerly tells Mr. Whitmore, yes. Before Milo knows it, he is traveling to the launch site for the submarine and begins meeting some of the other crew members. Cookie, the crew's cook, Vinny, the explosives expert, and Rourke, the expedition's leader. While launching the submarine, Milo is amazed at the technological marvels and preparations made by Mr. Whitmore. Inside the submarine, Milo meets two more crewmates, Mole the geologist and mining expert, and Sweet the medical officer. Lesson 5. Be eager to meet new people. You never know who you will meet. We next meet Mrs. Packard, who is in charge of radio communications and sonar. Milo then gives a presentation to his skeptical crewmates about what they can expect in the next part of their adventure. According to the Shepherd's Book, a leviathan protects the entrance to Atlantis. As the submarine passes shipwrecks from every era of maritime vessels, the crew begins to wonder if there really is a leviathan protecting Atlantis. Mrs. Packard interrupts their conversation and tells them that she hears something massive in the water on the sonar. The suspense is broken when the leviathan attacks the adventurers. Nothing can match the power of the Leviathan, which turns out to be an Atlantean Century robot. Torpedoes seemingly do no damage, and the crewmates are soon forced to abandon the main submarine in order to escape from the Guardian of the Waters. The Leviathan destroys many of the undersea vessels, and only a remnant survives to make it into the sink trap that leads to the entrance of Atlantis. Lesson 6 the loss of human life takes a toll on the collective morale. Only a couple dozen remain from over 200 adventurers that started on the journey. The success of the mission now depends on those left, and everyone needs to cover many responsibilities. Well, some people are more capable of doing multiple jobs than others. The adventurers make progress, however, as they travel underground. 
At first, Milo feels like an outsider and doesn't seem to fit in with the rest of the team. The adventurers face various trials in their journey, but please don't ask me how they found snow underground. Every crew member contributes with his strengths, whether it is Milo interpreting the journal, Vinny blowing things up and making bridges, or Mole creating tunnels to travel through. Lesson 7. Find what you are good at and use those talents for the good of those around you. After seeing how Milo has really helped the team, they start to include him more. Lesson 8. It doesn't feel good to be left out. Look for ways to try to include others and make them feel welcome. Another way that the group works on team building is that they share with each other their goals and dreams. Their expedition hasn't gone unnoticed, however, for mysterious people have been following the crew for most of their journey. When underground fireflies set fire to the whole encampment, everyone tries to escape across the bridge. While attempting to get to the other side, the bridge is destroyed and they all slide down into darkness. When the dust settles, they get a damage report and thankfully the vehicles fared well. Helga shoots a flare and they find out that they are inside a dormant volcano. Meanwhile, Milo meets Kida, and when the Atlanteans find that he is injured from the fall, she helps heal his wound using her mysterious crystal. Grateful for what they have done, Milo tries to follow the strangers and comes out of the volcano to a beautiful paradise. Atlantis, the Lost Empire. It has now been found again. The Atlanteans surround the crew, but after Milo tries speaking to them, they soon find that the Atlanteans can speak numerous languages, including English. Kida allows them to enter Atlantis so they can speak to the king. The king, however, is disappointed with Kida in bringing the strangers into the city, for the law forbids strangers to even see the city. Rourke presumes upon the king and asks to stay at least one night in Atlantis so they can prepare for their journey back to the surface. Lesson 9. Presumptive people are full of pride and arrogance, thinking that they are better than others. Despite Rourke's rude offensive manners, the king shows them grace and allows them to stay one night. The crew discusses how they can make inroads with the people of Atlantis, and it is decided that Milo is best suited to talk to Princess Kida. Milo meets Kida and they agree to exchange questions with each other. To Milo's surprise, Kida was alive thousands of years ago when Atlantis was buried beneath a sea. Milo shares his shepherd book and amazes Kida with some history about her own city. Kida is desperate to help Atlantis, for her civilization is slowly dying and in need of a revival of some kind. Amazingly, only Milo can read Atlantean, and when Kida shows him a hovercraft, he is able to show her how to operate the vehicle. Well, at least how to turn it on. Lesson 10. Be willing to learn from others. You never know what you can learn from them. Kida shows Milo the whole city, and he is amazed at the beauty and grandeur of the ancient civilization. The city is vibrant and alive to the surprise of the explorers who expected to only find ruins of the lost empire of Atlantis. For Milo, and perhaps some of the others, this changes everything about the purpose of their expedition. But for some of the crew, it changes nothing, and they won't stop until they get what they want. Lesson 11. Greed and coveting what others have is the cause of many conflicts. Many innocent people are hurt when people are motivated by greed. Meanwhile, Kida has more to show Milo. She takes him underwater where he can read more inscriptions and histories about Atlantis in hopes of finding anything that will help her dying civilization. The more Milo reads, the more he realizes that the key has something to do with the crystals that the Atlantean people wear. Not only that, there is something bigger, something in the heart of Atlantis that is critical to their civilization, and it was this power that helps them escape the disaster thousands of years ago. Lesson 12. When searching for answers, dig deeper until you find what you're looking for. After they think they have an answer, they return to the city only to find Rourke and the crew armed to the teeth and ready to get what they want by force. Turns out Rourke and the others are mercenaries, 
and are more concerned about making money than the actual archaeological value of Atlantis, or even what would happen to the people of Atlantis. They break into the palace and try to force the king to tell them where they can find the heart of Atlantis. When Rourke sits on the king's throne, he realizes where the heart of Atlantis is, and takes Milo and Kida with him underground. They find a massive crystal with engravings of past ancestors swirling around it. As Kida looks up at it, something comes over her and she walks on top of the water and is pulled up into the crystal. As she comes back down, the adventurers realize that she has absorbed the essence of the crystal into her being, which will allow Rourke and his plundering crew to capture the powerful crystal. Milo confronts the crew for how they are behaving, and shames them for only caring about money. When Rourke punches Milo, it's the last straw for many crew members, and they finally admit that what they are doing is wrong, and come to Milo's side. Lesson 13. People can change. Never give up on trying to help people change for the better. Rourke isn't put off and he escapes with Helga and the others with the heart of Atlantis and destroys the bridge behind. Milo returns to the king to see how he is doing and the king commissions him to save Atlantis and to save his daughter before she becomes part of the crystal. King Kajakim explains how Kida's mother was lost when Atlantis was saved from disaster. The queen was chosen in the same way that Kida was chosen by the crystal. The king tells Milo how he was like Rourke before Atlantis fell, and how his own pride led to the downfall of Atlantis. With this last plea, he gives his own crystal to Milo, and King Kajakim dies. Sweet asks Milo what the plan is, and Milo responds by telling him that he messed up everything so far. How could he possibly lead the crew now? Sweet tells him that when you hit rock bottom, there's only one way up, which is lesson 14. Milo seems to gain new resolve and goes out to find the other crew members. Then they go and find some Atlantean aircraft, and he teaches the crew and some volunteer Atlanteans how to fly them. They mount their vehicles and venture off to save Atlantis. They find Rourke and his minions preparing to escape by hot air balloon. But Rourke is never caught off guard and they start launching their own aircraft in a counterattack. After some dogfights in the air, they plan a distraction so that Audrey can try to cut Kida free. When that doesn't work, Milo crashes his aircraft into the hot air balloon and confronts Rourke directly. When the hot air balloon loses altitude, Rourke throws Helga overboard too and tells her it's nothing personal. As she dies, Helga helps the crew one last time and shoots the hot air balloon. As the hot air balloon descends back down the volcano, Milo is able to successfully defeat Rourke. Lesson 15. Justice will prevail in the end. Milo and Kida come back down and narrowly escape the flaming hot air balloon. Unfortunately, the explosion activates the volcano and they barely are able to lift Kida and the crystal out before hot lava starts flowing over the area. They make it back to the city with the lava hot on their tails. As the people of Atlantis wait for what seems like their doom, Milo breaks open the container with Kida and she begins to activate the power of Atlantis with the ancestors and awakens the guardians to protect the city. The slumbering giants activate their awesome power to protect the city from the lava with a protective force field. After the lava solidifies, the city is broken free and like a butterfly emerging from her cocoon, Atlantis emerges as a restored kingdom instead of a lost empire. Kida does not stay bound to the crystal and comes back down as she has given her life back for her to live. Milo especially is happy to see her and they embrace. Lesson 16. We all want to see restoration and the renewal of the world around us. Just like Atlantis is restored and renewed, we look forward to the renewal of this world. For the bravery and aid they gave to Atlantis, the crew is handsomely rewarded and do not leave empty-handed. 
Milo says goodbye to his fellow crewmates, and they all get a picture together for Mr. Whitmore. Back at his mansion, Mr. Whitmore goes over the cover story with the crew members because they want Atlantis to remain a secret and to protect it from any future plunderers like Rourke. Lesson 17. Not all entrepreneurs and investors are motivated by greed. Mr. Whitmore genuinely wanted to honor Milo's grandfather and discover Atlantis for the sake of exploration. Back at Atlantis, Kita activates an honorary stone for her father, and it joins the other stones around the heart of Atlantis. Atlantis is now no longer the lost empire, but is now a renewed and flourishing empire. And Milo, Kita, and the rest live happily ever after.